I'm walking along Speak Road in South Liverpool, heading towards Woolton Village. On the left hand side behind the sandstone wall is Doe Park. This was purchased by Lewis Cohen in 1899 and he turned it into Woolton Golf Club. Lewis Cohen owned Lewis's department store in Liverpool city centre. In 1906 he purchased the land on the right hand side of the road making this golf course an 18-holer. The houses on this estate were built during the late 1950s. We moved into our brand new three-bedroom semi in 1960 for the grand price of £2,000. During the 1960s this was an army camp. We used to walk through it to get to School Lane and get access to Walton Woods so we could play football. The Air Training Corps had a wooden hut here in those days, not as grand as this one. We are now on School Lane and this is Much Walton School. Dating from 1610, it was the oldest school in Lancashire and the oldest elementary school in Liverpool. Further along School Lane we come to this building. It's a disused golf lodge belonging to Doe Park. Turning into Camp Hill. The Dutch Gardens of Meditation were once part of a large house that sat here on top of Camp Hill. Camp Hill is adjoined to Walton Wood and the pathway takes you through to Walton Village. We're not going to take that today, we will return to Walton Wood later in the video. Walton Village isn't without churches. It probably has more than its fair share. Over the years, some have changed their use. Some have become nurseries for small children, while others have become care homes for the elderly. This is St Peter's Church in Walton Village, destination for Beatles fans from around the world. St Peter's Church Hall, where, in July 1957, John Lennon was introduced to Paul McCartney. St Peter's Church, on the opposite side of the road, is where Beatles fans flock to see the gravestone of Eleanor Rigby. St Peter's was completed in 1887, and the church is built on the highest point in Liverpool. This is what Beatles fans travel here to see. This is the grave of Eleanor Rigby, a song off the Beatles 1966 album Revolver. John Lennon's uncle, George Too Good Smith, with whom he lived with when he was a child, is also buried here. Taking a left turn from St Peter's Church, we're going to take a walk up Church Road, which is quite a steep hill, lined with some very lovely houses. Near the top of Church Road, we come to the aptly named Reservoir Road. Opposite Reservoir Road is the entrance to Reynolds Park. It really is a hidden gem in Walton Village as it'd be very easy just to drive past and never notice it. Formerly known as Dove Park, this area was owned by quite a few wealthy families throughout the years. The last owner was James Reynolds. The building which stands at the main entrance is the Old Lodge. James Reynolds made his fortune as a cotton trader he lived in Walton Village for over 50 years. He donated this 14 acre site to Liverpool Corporation in 1929 and it became a public park. Like Walton Wood, which we'll visit later, Reynolds Park has a lovely walled garden. The Mansion House, which was the home to the Reynolds family, 
was sadly destroyed by fire in 1975. Although many shops have changed hands and changed names over the years, some pubs have closed down, the overall look of Woolton Village is pretty much the same now as it was in 1960 when I moved here. This was once my favourite pub, the Coach and Horses. Another hidden gem of Woolton Village hides in Mason Street. Woolton Picture House is a privately owned cinema. It dates back to around 1926, but the present owners took over in 2007. As kids we used to come here on a Saturday morning to watch the cartoons. This is the only single screen cinema in the city. Allerton Road runs through the middle of Walton Village, from here at Lodes Pond, right through to what used to be the Bear Brand factory at the other end. Now that your children are educated by Wikipedia, you have no need for libraries anymore. Sadly, this one's closed. So did I. This is Quarry Street. Apparently it has nothing to do with John Lennon's first band being called the Quarrymen. Some say it does. Anyway, we're going to take a walk along Quarry Street from this end to the other. This is the old sandstone quarry used to build many houses and walls in Walton and surrounding area and also used to build the Anglican Cathedral. As you can see, there's a walkway across the top. That walkway, which takes us across the top of the quarry, leads to Church Road. The old police station and courthouse, which has now been turned into residential accommodation. We're now at the other end of Quarry Street and near its junction with Reservoir Road. A short walk and we'll be on Beaconsfield Road where we'll find Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields was once a children's home run by the Salvation Army. John Lennon only lived around the corner and he used to come here, climb over the wall and sit in the garden. The original Strawberry Fields home was demolished in 1973. The original gates were removed in 2011 and replaced by these replicas. On the 14th of September 2019, the Salvation Army opened this information centre. It tells the story of the site and how John Lennon came to write his famous song. John Lennon's childhood home is just a short walk from Strawberry Fields. It's situated on Menlo Avenue and it's now owned by the National Trust. As promised earlier in the video, we're now going to take a look at Walton Wood. Walton Wood once formed the estate of Walton Hall. Personally, in all the years of being here, I've never seen Walton Hall. It's hidden away on Speak Road behind a sandstone wall. 
You can, however, just see the back end of the hall through the gates of St. Julie's School. From 1948 up to 1970, Walton Hall was known as Notre Dame High School for Girls, a Catholic school run by nuns. In 1980, it was acquired by the Hibbert family. They turned it into a venue which could be hired for weddings or special events. That went by the by, and I believe these days the building is in pretty bad shape. Woolton Wood, along with its walled garden and the adjacent Camp Hill, was acquired by Liverpool City Council in the 1920s. And so, as we come to School Lane once again, we come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch up soon.